Hello everybody. Today I'm going to talk to you about how having great conversations is vital for your personal and your professional life. Now, you would think that we all have conversations all the time and, and we understand how these conversations uh, flow and, and, and how to have great conversations. And we do occasionally have great conversations. There's no doubt about that. Um, this, this session is going to be a little bit about understanding the fundamentals of great conversations um, and, and, and that's around kind of three main areas that I'll explore during the video. It's understanding and having the ability to have a really great conversation um, and it's critical to helping us deal with uh, complex and sensitive issues that we face on a daily basis, uh, especially as a consultant or a startup founder, uh, you know, it's vital to be able to have really great conversations. Um, it's it's the ability to apply a selection of different tools, techniques and models. Um, and it's also important to understand how what the difference is between advocacy and inquiry, what the difference is between open and closed questions um, and how we can use those questions to have really great outcomes uh, in our conversations. So the five key parts of great conversations are great questioning, balancing advocacy and inquiry, great listening, congruence and the ladder of inference. So first of all, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about effective questioning and how that works. There's a number of different questioning styles. There are open-ended questions and there are leading questions. There are probing questions and loaded questions, reflective uh, and multiple choice, observational, uh, challenging, elaborations and unanswerable questions. So it's really important to understand when to use what kind of questions. So in the next little bit, I'll talk to you about the conversational funnel um, and how these different types of questions can be used in that conversational funnel. The idea of the conversational funnel is pretty simple. At the top of the conversational funnel, you start with hello, and at the bottom, you finish with goodbye. Um, so at the top, you start with very open-ended questions. Uh, how was your day? How do you feel about something? How uh, can we progress with this? It's really allowing the other person to open up and let their ideas and feelings and, and processes flow. It's, it's all about being very, very uh, open and, and, and uh, allowing them to go across the depth of, of the uh, subject matter that you're, you're discussing. Now, the next part is, is then finding the pressure point of the area that you want to delve into when, where you want the conversation to become deeper. Um, and then you, become to, you start to become a bit more observational, a bit more reflective, probing, um, and, and, and try to get the person to elaborate. So let's say we've got somebody who wants to, to speak about, um, so I'll give you an example from, from my consulting uh, conversations. So I was speaking to a CIO um, at, at um, uh, a company here in the UK, um, and he was talking about a, a range of different issues that he was having. Um, so he said something like, you know, across my uh, IT landscape, I have, um, there's the following projects are happening. And I noticed that when, when he spoke about one of the projects, which was about architecture, he, he, he paused, he, he, he stopped and he kind of, you know, there, there was, there was, there was uh, a change in his features, there was a change in his tone. Um, and I thought, let, let me try to understand what's happening here. So I, there's where I found a particular um, a, a point that I could go into more detail on. Um, so I said, well, that's interesting because the way you said that, it feels like you've got a particular issue around the architecture. And he said, well, not specifically around the architecture, but I do have a problem with people going off and buying their own applications to put into this architecture. And I went, that's really interesting because I've seen that happen elsewhere uh, too. Um, so then I kind of probed a little bit and said, okay, so who, which people are doing that and which areas of the business are doing that and what issues does that cause? So as you can see, I've gone from an open-ended, how are you doing? How's your, how are things in your world? To specifically about architecture and then specifically about um, the people or the processes that are causing him an issue. Um, so then we went to, into, oh, well, there's, there's the following three people always want to go off and buy their own applications. They don't want to buy what the rest of the business has, and it doesn't necessarily fit into the architecture. So then I'm into very closed, uh, closed ended questions. They're, they're questions about what are you going to do about this? Um, so the questions then become, um, you know, have you had the conversation with that person? Um, have you, are you able to really 
understand what they're doing and why they're doing are, are the, those new, new applications do they fit into your processes um, the data that comes out of those uh, new um, uh, applications what can you do with those so those sorts of questions really get to an outcome because of, of any great conversation you know you have a hello um, and you're, you don't have an outcome you don't have a way forward and by the time you get to goodbye you have an outcome you have a way forward you have some action you have some point of interest that you that really helps um, so so that's kind of how the the planning of great conversations happens so the second part of having great conversations is balancing advocacy and inquiry uh, by advocacy i mean sharing a point of view making statements saying i think the following inquiry is seeking to understand it's going back to the previous um, piece we spoke about which is is trying to understand by questions and try to probe down into something by questions. So advocacy states a view directly, uh, it's very explicit about its purpose, um, you give reasons, examples, uh, you make conclusive um, and open statements to influence and you uh, explore views one at a time. So it's very, it's very important to have this idea of advocacy especially if you're consulting it's very important to go i think the following inquiry is more about being consultative in its more traditional way which is trying to get to the bottom of the problem um, it's trying to test your understanding it's trying to test your hypotheses um, it's, it's also trying to explore reasoning um, it's soliciting a range of views it's, it's encouraging questioning and it's eliciting data through these open questions Ray Dalio, in his book Principles, uh, considers inquiry kind of a really important part of, of understanding what's going on and understanding whether something is true or not, right? So how do we understand that? Let's ask a question. Let's get to the bottom of whether we think something's true or not, uh, and let's move forward from there. The key point here is important to have strong ideas, loosely held, strong points of view, loosely held. That's a really key, key piece here. So the third part of great conversations, for me, the most important part is great listening. How to really, really listen during conversation is absolutely vital. Um, and generally, there's this kind of three levels uh, of, of listening. Um, and, and generally, people don't listen. Uh, people, are, this, people, this is really important because people are not good at this. Um, instead of listening, they're reloading. They're thinking, what should I say now? What should I, you know, what's the next bit to say? Where really the art of the great conversation is all about just stopping stop thinking and let everything in just open up look and listen and really try to understand what's happening with the other person uh, then stop think and then and then and then reply so the three levels that i i, I just uh, spoke about is level one focus on you um it's an internal focus it's listening to work out what things mean to us right so you listen you go what does this mean for me what you know what 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 does, what does this mean? Uh, what shall I do? What's the outcome for me? Um, and that happens a lot and it happens to the best of us. And that's something that we have to try and uh, flow through. The next level of focus is, is focusing on the other person. Uh, and it's all about um, listening to understand what that means to them. Um, and that's good, that's useful. Um, but the third level of, of um, really good listening or active listening is a global focus it's about us and about the conversation and the way forward so it's always important to have that view of how are we going to move forward through this how does this affect us as uh, two people having a conversation within this larger group and it's really important to do that in, in good listening so now i'm going to go into a few really great active listening techniques technique one is bracket so it's to put in brackets your immediate reaction when you when you hear something and that's oh I'm thinking about what I'm thinking rather than listening. I'm going to put a bracket around that, put it over here, and then we'll come back to it. Um, the second key key um, active listening technique is um, to reflect the message back, uh, and that's a verbal reflection of the message back. So what you're saying is X, Y, Z, and that's a good way of un uh, ensuring that you're understanding and showing that you're understanding and listening. Um, paraphrasing. This is very similar to reflecting back. Um, but it's more to do with saying the same thing to the person in different words. And actually, it's a deeper level of, of listening uh, than just reflecting back. Um, a, a, a fourth one, which is which is really important, is checking your perceptions. 
and going right I thought this is what the person is saying but is that correct is that what they're actually saying um, is there a difference between the message that came into my ears or went into my head and then came out on the other side because because there might be um, it, it might be a way of uh, something changing in, in between um, within that there is the, the the what's really important is check for incongruence are you hearing and seeing different things as someone saying that they're sad about something but they don't look that sad um, are they saying that you know something terrible has happened but really they don't look so like something terrible has happened there's there's really important um kind of visual audio kind of uh, uh matching there that's really important uh and then finally you know a part of the active listening technique is to open uh ask those open and question open questions like we spoke about in the in the um uh in the uh, funnel uh earlier now that funnel starts off with open-ended question because the open-ended questions are designed to make the other person speak and the point of the other person speaking is so you can listen really well so the next part of great conversations is congruence now congruence means that there is a line up between what the person is saying and how they're saying it so your voice your communication is is the words are only a very small part of it the words are calculated at something like seven percent which is which is which is tiny um, most of your communication comes from body language uh, and the tone of your voice so apparently it's 55 percent uh, body language and 38 percent uh, the tone of your voice um, so the way in which you are putting something across it's very important that your body language your your voice uh, is aligned with the words that are coming out um, so when the two people or two or, or more having conversations it's really important to, to keep your eyes open and really look at the person and try to understand are you saying what you are uh, are you feeling what you're saying and what's even more important that is that, that you look at yourself and say am i sure that what i'm saying and what i'm feeling or looking is the same thing um, uh, another point in there which you, you'll find very important to, to calm down difficult conversations is to go to the level of energy that that person has if someone comes to you and says oh my god something terrible has happened and you go oh really mm, well what are you gonna do you can tell even if you're worried that level of energy did not match the level of energy of the, the person who was worried um, and you instantly put them off whereas if someone comes and said, says to you oh no something terrible has happened and you're like oh no what's happened <laughs> that level of energy is in it matches and it immediately makes the other people feel right they understand my feelings and, and this links into kind of eq and, and 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 lots of other things that i will uh, talk about in other videos um but all of that matches up to make sure that you you are producing your coming coming together to produce a, a really great conversation the final part of of great conversations is the uh, ladder of judgment or inference now by inference what we mean is what will actually be done what action will you take from from any conversation um and it's really important to to kind of have a, a rational way of thinking about a conversation and a rational way of moving forward um so the first thing to do is make sure that you're selecting what, what you're hearing is correct and it's really key to make sure that you are trying to feed back what actually happened via you know real data so it's really important to take great great notes um, if you can record these conversations that's probably not normal and and and, and not an easy uh, thing to, to say to somebody hey I'm recording our conversation that's that's a difficult thing to do uh, but it's really important to take really good notes um, there'll be other conversations about notes there's another video about that coming um, so it's, first thing is get get great great data secondly filter through and see which data is real and which is just a uh, which is your bias and, and which you understood in a certain way um, and it's important to kind of weed out those biases and say right what is the reality of what's happened in this conversation um, so then uh, based on on that then you you make assumptions and adopt beliefs um, and you, you come to a point where you say right I think the following thing from that conversation I've made the following assumption because of that conversation um, you then have a reflective loop and you go back and, and you look at the data again and say do did I make a false assumption there or did my biases come into it or um, some other belief come into it that that is not necessarily true 
once you've done that, you might then make uh, further assumptions and adopt further beliefs. The final level of this ladder of judgment is to take action and to move forward. Um, so those are the kind of the three or four levels of the ladder of inference, the ladder of judgment. And it's about at the end of that conversation, what actions do you take based on the information that you've gotten from, from that conversation? Uh, so this video has been about um, great conversations and some of the technical tools of great conversations. Now, it's really important for you to A, go away, look at this, watch this video a couple of times to really get to the bottom of what some of those things are. Um, I think B, it's really important to analyze your own uh, style, your own techniques, your own ways of doing things, um, and then get to the bottom of where you need to improve. Um, and then the third one, obviously, is practice. It's easiest to practice with, with uh, people you live with, with your, your loved ones, your friends. It's probably easier to have these practice conversations with those people because you're having conversations that are real all the time anyway hopefully at the end of this video you'll you'll start to match some of the things in the video to what's happening in your real conversations and come to a conclusion uh, about where you want to change things and how you want to change things and how you want to improve and then hopefully you can take that away whether you're a founder you whether you're a, a, a consultant or a professional or some other kind uh, how you take some of these techniques into the real world into your conversations um, and build out really, really convers great conversations. There is nothing more important uh, in your, you know, in your personal or professional life with, than these great conversations. They they will open up doors. They will lead you forward. Um, you know, the world is, you know, a human perception of the world is just what you say uh, and what you do. These are the only two things we have, right? Um, and so it's very important to make sure that that that. The conversations we have are really, really great. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Um, hopefully there's lots more to come. There, there is definitely a lot more, lots more to come. Um, so please uh, like the video. Please comment. Ask me any questions. Um, if you have any comments or suggestions or statements, let me know. Um, that would be great. Uh, please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.